Good morning. Excellencies, uh, Mr. Festus Mohai, former president of Botswana, uh, Madam uh, Mary Robinson, former president of Ireland, Honorable Minister of Water, Irrigation and Energy from the Federal Republic of Ethiopia, Dr. Carlos Lopez, Executive Secretary ECA, Madam uh, Rhoda Peace Tumisimi, African Union Commissioner for Rural Economy and Agriculture, Honorable Ministers uh, from Zimbabwe and the Gambia. I am honored to be here uh, with you today at the third conference uh, on climate change and development in Africa. Allow me to join uh, my esteemed colleagues in expressing our appreciation to the government of the Federal Republic, Federal Democratic Republic of Ethiopia for hosting this important event. On behalf of President uh, Donald uh, Kabiruka, I would also like to extend special thanks to all the participants for being here today to exchange views on how to address the challenges of building resilience of our nations and communities to deal with the impacts and threats of climate change. This conference comes at an opportune time since it provides us with a common forum for discussion ahead of COP19 taking place uh, next month. Excellencies, distinguished ladies and gentlemen. Dr. Donald Kabruka has often said, we have two challenges, fighting global poverty and fighting climate change. Our failure on one means failure on the other one as well. Climate change serious, seriously threatens to undermine all the development and progress made so far, including poverty reduction and the achievements that many African countries made under the Millennium Development Goals. Climate change and rainfall variability are affecting agriculture and natural resources productivity, thereby exacerbating poverty and contributing to decline in economic, in economic growth. Therefore, as Africa embarks on its transformation agenda, a key concern is the quality of development that the continent is undertaking. Technologically, Africa has opportunity to leapfrog rather than reinvent. Where possible, we need to leverage greener and more efficient technologies in order to win the fight against both poverty and climate change. Excellencies, Africa has registered impressive growth over the past decades, leading to energy increase, leading to increase in energy demand and linked emissions. This is happening at a time where most African population lack access to electricity. Africa has to continue to grow its energy sector to meet the demands of its growing population and its growth. But at the same time, Africa will need to contribute to the global agenda of green grass, greenhouse uh, gas reductions. Now, African cities which are hosting the growing populations are forced, are faced with numerous challenges of providing adequate sustainable urban services like water, housing, waste management, transport, food, etc., to the ever expanded uh, populations. As these challenges mount, the continent should also take it as an opportunity to use proven, cost efficient, and effective technologies in addressing those demands. Changing the development trajectory means changing public policy, changing the way the state runs in its affairs and requires governments to be more open, inclusive, and accountable. Thus, there is an urgent need to build robust state institutions capable of developing robust policies and, deliverable and delivering sustainable solutions. Ladies and gentlemen, as you may all be aware, the African Development Bank is committed to supporting its client member countries to gradually transition to green growth, as indicated in the 10-year strategy of the African Development Bank covering 2013-2022, within the context of its twin objectives of inclusive growth and gradual transition to greener economies. The African Development Bank recognizes that there is no single approach to green growth that is universally acceptable to all countries. It is not a one-size-fits-all magic 
development paradigm. It's about finding tailored solutions that help to identify pathways that respond to the specificities and the development needs of each African country. African countries themselves recognize and are already taking steps in, in, in uh, developing their economies while being mindful of the impacts of climate change and the need for longer term sustainable solutions to transforming their economies. Our host country, Ethiopia, is a leading example in this regard. Just to share with you some examples, the African Development Bank is supporting Sierra Leone to mainstream green growth in its poverty reduction strategy. In Mozambique, we're working with UNEP and the WWF to assist them in the elaboration of the country green growth uh, plans. Similar effort in taking many other countries in Africa, including Kenya, Rwanda, and Cape Verde. For their credit, African countries recognize the need to move from emergency response to the impacts of the climate change to identifying and implementing longer-term solutions to the problem. Our programs in the Horn of Africa and in the Sahel are live examples on how the collective political will of these countries working with the development institutions and the knowledge institutions of Africa can design and implement longer-term solutions rather than having to deal with the issue from time to time on an emergency basis. But we need to be mindful that this takes billions of dollars to implement and takes a long time to cover the spatial spectrum of these interventions. This is why the whole issue of financing development and dealing with the issues and impacts of climate change is uh, something that needs to be taken from different angles. I, I fully support the, uh, the remarks by uh, my colleague, Dr. Lopez, uh, on the issue of the uh, framework for the global negotiations on the climate change and the whole issue of finance. But it's equally important that we recognize that Africa has an abundance of natural resources in the area of water, forest, land, oil and gas mining. And we believe that African countries, if they are supported properly to better manage uh, those resources in terms of extraction, value addition, but also in negotiating a fair, a fair value for uh, the exploitation of these resources, Africa should be able to make a significant contribution to its own development. And this is why the African Development Bank have established last week uh, a new center uh, that is going to focus on natural resources management that will cover the whole spectrum of these areas. And then this, is, of course, is going to be a very collaborative effort working with our colleagues from the ECA and from the African Union and many, other, and many other partners present in the room. But in recognition to the very uh, uh, daunting challenges of the uh, climate negotiation process and then ahead of the COP19, uh, which is taking place uh, next month, I wish to uh, really give a vote of thanks to Africa's uh, group of negotiators who are really doing an enormous amount of work under extremely challenging conditions, both in terms of the availability of the means for them to conduct their work, but also the very challenging and the very complicated political environment within which these uh, negotiations are taking place. I think it's also important that as we uh, uh, scale up our efforts to assist the countries we need to collectively see how we can contribute to the whole issue of the design of the Green Climate Fund and how it eventually can become a very important source for funding part of the uh, development in Africa and the dealing and assisting some of the African countries that are most affected with this whole issue of adverse impacts of climate to access funding from these important resources and eventually uh, to complement their own in dealing with the issues. Now. Um, to conclude, uh, I believe that this conference will provide us with uh, a very uh, important opportunity to think together on how we can scale up our collective effort, build partnerships for sustainable solutions, and more importantly, for action. I am very glad uh, uh, to hear the six-point plan that was announced by uh, Dr. Lopez, and uh, uh, our teams will be working very closely to see how we can make our own contribution in uh, uh, the delivery of some of the proposals that have just been announced uh, by ECA. 
Now, uh, finally, uh, I wish to say that through the collaborative program uh, between the African Union, ECA, and the African Development Bank, on, known as CLIMDEV Africa, uh, we know and we'll be able to make a significant uh, difference on the ground. I call on all of you to join us in this effort, and thank you very much for your attention. Thank you.